Nursing student with cancer gets a surprise pinning ceremony at her bedside. Lawmaker says tougher staffing enforcement needed to prevent sepsis in nursing homes. Opioid misuse sending more older adults to emergency departments. And CMS says changes to skilled nursing facility inspections, staffing requirements, and new quality measures coming in April. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Julie Harless was trying to become an RN at 50, but a recent diagnosis made her believe that dream would never be achieved. Harless decided to go back to school in 2017 to earn a degree from Ashland Community and Technical College in Kentucky. She had been working as a nursing assistant for almost two decades. But last week, she was diagnosed with stage 4 lung and ovarian cancer and was also found in her hips and tailbone. Her condition rapidly declined. Sitting in class just a month ago, she's now in hospice. Her classmates learned that she was not expected to live to her graduation in May 2020 so they decided to bring the honor to her bedside. A crowd of more than 100 people had a surprise pinning ceremony at Our Lady Belafonte Hospital in Ashland on Wednesday. Her family was touched by the gesture and overwhelmed that the program would provide the honor Harless had dreamed about. Her sister Barb Harless is also in the program. She plans to wear Julie's pin if she cannot attend the actual graduation ceremony in 2020. In an effort to address sepsis rates among nursing home residents, one Illinois lawmaker says the answer can be found in better tracking of staffing levels. Senator Jacqueline Collins, the Democrat for Chicago, announced a bill supported by AARP that would require state regulators to obtain Medicaid payroll data from facilities to calculate each quarter whether they are meeting minimum staffing standards. Illinois requires at least 2.5 hours of direct daily care for residents. Matt Hartman, the executive director of the Illinois Healthcare Association, called the bill redundant and said he's disappointed that nursing home stakeholders were not included in the process. Collins' measure comes partly in response to a joint investigative series in September by the Tribune and Kaiser Health News. It found that 6,000 nursing home residents who were hospitalized each year had sepsis, with one in five dying. The, the report noted staffing levels for skilled nursing facilities in Illinois were some of the lowest in the country. Under the proposed legislation, nursing homes that fail its staffing test would be fined at least twice the money saved by not staffing properly. They would also have to post signs in the doorways informing customers that they had failed to provide proper staffing during the previous quarter. We'll be back right after this break. Want a better way to invest in yourself as a CNA? And for only 10 cents per day, there's no better way to spend your daily dime. Start right here at NACACNA.org. Click on membership, fill out a few boxes, submit, and you're in. With the National Association of Healthcare Assistants, you can begin your journey. With these great benefits that include 12 hours of education with the NACA Virtual Campus of Care, our monthly newsletter, The NACA Edge, will come straight to your email with a special recognition to you. Registration discount to CNA Fest, NACA's annual CNA gathering just outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. 10% off anything in the NACA Pro Shop. CNA TV, our YouTube channel that focuses on topics, current events that pertain to what a CNA is all about, and much more. Start right here at NACACNA.org. Emergency room visits by seniors who have misused opioids more than tripled between 2006 and 2014, according to a new study. The misuse of painkillers has had a snowball effect for seniors, leading to an increase in the number of chronic conditions, greater injury risk, and higher rates of mental health diagnoses researchers with Townsend University found. Researchers studied multiple years of nationally representative data from the nationwide emergency department sample. That included more than 950 hospitals across 34 states and the District of Columbia. Visit rates by adults older than 65 for opioid misuse increased 217% between 2006 and 
during the study period. The federal government is further tightening the screws on regulation of nursing home staffing and quality with a big shakeup starting as soon as next month. Changes coming down the pipeline in April will include revisions to the nursing home inspection process, adding new quality measures to its rating system, and further enhancing details about facility staffing numbers. On the latter, officials say they're dropping the number of days skilled nursing facilities can go without an RN before they're bumped down to a one-star rating. CMS said it is setting higher thresholds and evidence-based standards for nursing home staffing levels. The agency notes that staffing has the highest impact on quality of care. Currently, those that report seven or more days in a quarter with no registered nurse on site are automatically dropped to one star, but that threshold for an automatic downgrade will fall to only four days. The American Healthcare Association, meanwhile, said it supports the changes to five star, but thinks CMS needs to go further. The agency is putting an emphasis on RN staffing related to nurse aides and licensed practical nurses with new rounding methods. However, it is important to realize that it is not just RNs who play a role in patient-centered care, but also therapists. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.